Okay. Well, this is a J15 engine built by Pratt & Whitney, uh, 34,000 pounds of thrust each engine, 68,000 pounds total for two engines. Uh, these are the inlet guide vanes. You can see we had, uh, these are shifting inlet guide vanes. They shifted from camber to an axial position at about, uh, oh, a compressor inlet temperature, which was measured right here, about 400 degrees centigrade. About 400, these, CI, these blades were then changed to the, the, from a camber to an axial position. Uh, let's move around this way on the engine. This is the oil tank for it. Uh, this is all the accessory shaft for the uh, hydraulic pumps, electrical systems. All this is accessory. Here's a bypass tube. Most engines don't have these bypass tubes. There's three on each side. Three, or, I'm sorry, yes, yeah, six total. When they first developed the J58, uh, they found that a lot of uh, air was jamming up inside the uh, compressor section. So to alleviate that, they built these tubes to take some of the pressure off. Instead of just dumping it overboard, Kelly said, let's utilize that. So it goes back, it bypasses the turbine section, it re-energizes the engine back here and provides a small amount of additional thrust, these six bypass tubes. These are the main fuel control lines coming back to the afterburner. You can see they're pretty beefy. These are the, these are the ones that do the work. There's one, two, three, four. These control your nozzles. I'll show you in the back, but they open and close the nozzles, the afterburner nozzles right here. These are the actuating rods for them. This is the working end of it. Uh, as you look in here, you'll see a lot of ceramic. Uh, the ceramics designed to keep the uh, cooling, obviously, and that's why the perforated holes throughout. Each one of those concentric rings <coughs> are spray bars, and that's where your fuel is coming out, the raw fuel. And the throttle, when you're an afterburner, if you're a minimum afterburner, you may have one and a half rings going. When you're in full afterburner, all four of those rings are putting up raw 100% JP7 fuel for the afterburner. Now the exhaust position nozzles, open and closing, are these things right here. These will open off those actuating rods, they'll close down to sort of, ever how you have the throttle, these nozzles will focus the thrust more directly back rather than open like this so we get more thrust out of the airplane. The engine starts about, I would say three feet back into that model in the ceiling here and goes all the way back to where you see those those doors that are what we call suck-in doors. That silvery part at the end is not, nothing to do with the engine. That's all part of the airframe. And those are uh, what we call the turkey feathers. They open and close and they modulate strictly by how much pressure is coming out the back end. The suck-in doors provide additional cooling. They're, mere, they're on springs and they just open up as you go and they provide additional cooling for the back and the afterburner section. The engine part of the inlet is very small uh, to the whole inlet. And the whole inlet is where the work is being done to go Mach 3. Uh, Kelly made this airplane go Mach 3 not because of the engines, but because of the inlet design. You capture that Mach 3 air up on the spike. The spike is locked forward. It opens up at uh, Mach 1.6 and it starts moving back into the inlet, captures the shockwave, it brings that shockwave inside the inlet and then uses the air inside and goes all around the core engine that we just saw and comes back and re-energizes at the back end and that's what gives us the additional thrust. Kelly always told us that flying at Mach 3.2 cruise, the engines, the J58 engines, only produced 20% of the thrust. The 80% of the thrust comes from the utilization of the Mach 3.2 air and re-energizing it and going at the back end. The, the simplest analogy I can tell you of what's happening here, very simplistically, if I take a water hose, a garden hose, and I have a water line, it's going to go out, maybe go out a couple feet in front of me, two feet, maybe three feet. If I put my finger over that end of that hose, I can have that thing shoot out 25, 30 feet, and that's exactly what's happening in the back of this thing. That's, that's very simplistic, but that's basically what we're doing.